Bulls Nation, we have a lot of ups and a lot of downs to discuss through the, throughout this season already and probably to come. But the Chicago Bulls today have done exactly what they're supposed to do, carrying over a huge performance going into a very, very tough Western Conference. We have a lot to discuss, many away games to come, and let's talk about the Chicago Bulls and their performance tonight against the Dallas Mavericks in this video. Let's do it. What's up, everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show, and welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a Chicago Bulls versus Dallas Mavericks game reaction for the Chicago Bulls. A very, very, very big victory considering the competition that we have ahead of us in the Western Conference. We've got very tough teams to look forward to, and ultimately, against a weakened Dallas Mavericks side, we did exactly what we were supposed to do and carry out a win that could be very essential going into that Western Conference. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on. We are only three subscribers away from the 380 subscriber mark. Would love if we can hit that as soon as possible. Heading into the 400 subscriber mark, that would be amazing. But again, let's enough about that. Let's talk about the Chicago Bulls and the Dallas Mavericks. This game was a bit of an up and down game, to be honest. It was a lot of painful scenarios, a lot of painful turnovers, a lot of painful. I guess, uh, offensive possessions. There was good defense played by both sides today in, in um, spades of the game. But ultimately, the Chicago Bulls did what they were supposed to do. They beat the Dallas Mavericks 118 to 108. Um, what made this game a winnable game for us, to be honest, is that Luka Doncic was not playing in this game. So the Dallas Mavericks came into this game with no Kristaps Porzingis and no Luka Doncic. And the Chicago Bulls took advantage of having their two best players out for the Dallas Mavericks and picked up a win that they should win. Again, this is not a game to go over the top or go insane like, oh my goodness, we beat a good team. Dallas Mavericks, without those two players, they're, they're a good, they have good players on that team even still, but... They're not, they're, they're leaps and bounds better with Luca and Porzingis in that team. So you don't take this win as a win, like, uh, you don't, I guess, don't get carried away with this victory. But this win is very, very huge. Again, the competition that we have after this game, the Blazers, the Kings, to be fair, we should we should compete against the Kings, the Clippers and the Lakers, and then we got Boston. Very, very, very tough games ahead of us for the Chicago Bulls. So picking up a win that is what we're expected to do against a weak in Dallas Mavericks side, it just shows. It just shows that we are we are growing a little bit. We are doing what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to beat teams that we're better than. And that Dallas Mavericks team that came into that court tonight, we are better than them. And we, we deserve to win that game and we beat them. Again, there are many, many ways that we beat the Dallas Mavericks. Of course, um, you could say without Zach Levine tonight, we would be nowhere near that. And you, you're spot on. If, if Zach Levine didn't play tonight, we would have lost that game. But Zach Levine played tonight and we won the game. And there is a lot of things that go into that win. Again, the defense relatively for the first few quarters, the defense for both sides is what... Uh, made this a little bit difficult to score. Uh, the, the thing is that the Bulls and the Mavericks like to play with the fast break, like to go out and run, use their young legs. Uh, both teams prevented that very, very well today. A lot of pick and rolls, a lot of open threes for the Dallas Mavericks' sake. Um, we got into the paint a lot, the Chicago Bulls. We're doing very, very well when it comes to scoring in the paint. Uh, the rebounds, some of the rebounding that we had today was very, very good. Our point guard and shooting guard had over five rebounds today. Wendell Carter had seven rebounds today. There is The rebounding was very, very solid from the Chicago Bulls. I believe we won that very comfortably. There are a lot of things that went into that. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, let's go into individual performance. Because that is the key here. Now, I'm going to leave the best performer for last because obviously when you see a performer like what we saw out of that particular player, my goodness, my goodness, uh, definitely the key to the win today. I want to start off with, um, with, with Wendell Carter who had seven points and seven rebounds. Now, Wendell Carter, in my opinion, I think he needs a little bit of motivation because at the end of the day, look, it's not a bad scoreline whatsoever for Wendell Carter. Seven and seven uh, for him on by his standards is, especially this season as well, it's not bad. But he is getting outplayed by our other center, Daniel Gafford, who has 12 points and four rebounds today. 
And I want to see more from Wendell Carter. I want to see more confidence from Wendell Carter. I think this is a massive confidence issue and not necessarily the quality. Because I feel like Wendell Carter, when it comes to quality, he has more to his game than what Daniel Gafford would have. He's a good rebounder and he can shoot the ball to an extent. But... Right now, he's getting outplayed. So there needs to be a message sent to Wendell Carter, whether it's a motivational message or a kick up the backside to show, to, to ball out a little bit more. Because if you're getting outplayed by your bench center, how many games are we going to allow that to happen until we make that bench center our starting center? And that's a big thing. Unfortunately for uh, Wendell Carter, even when he has a good game, it seems like Daniel Gafford's having a better one every single night right now. Again, we know Wendell Carter. Look, Wendell Carter's not been bad at all this week. Not not bad at all. But I want to see him play a little bit better, especially with Larry Markkinen out. A lot of that front court goes to him. He needs to be performing a little bit better in those areas. And let's see what he can do in the next game. Again, you can't be mad about a victory. Wendell Carter did play a, a part in that victory. And I want to see a little bit more. Kobe White had a great game. 23 points, 5 assists, and 7 rebounds. Um... All of the points came from the second half of Kobe White. I believe he had 21 points in the second half. So, first half he was awful. Second half he was he was fantastic. He had four turnovers. Um, I'd like to see a little bit better from Kobe White. I want to see him play all four quarters and not be streaky. He seems to be streaky within quarters. Uh, but again, a major part to that fourth quarter was Kobe White. A major part to that victory. Otto Porter, once again, had a good night. Started the game tonight. 15 points, two rebounds. Uh, seven rebounds and two assists. A great game from Otto Porter. Patrick Williams had six points, one uh, assist and five rebounds. A great game from Patrick Williams. Again, um, I'm liking how Patrick Williams is playing. And I know the stats don't necessarily show what Patrick Williams is doing. But I really feel like with more of the opportunity to take more shots, Patrick Williams will be a very, very good player for us. Right now, it's the fifth option in that starting lineup for in terms of shot selection. Who's going to get the shots? And so far, I think Patrick Williams is doing the best with his opportunities. He's not playing as many minutes as all the other starters either. So, again, s slow strides with Patrick Williams. Patience will be the key with him. I think he's going to do great. Uh, I already talked about Daniel Gafford. Denzel Valentine had six points and four rebounds. Um, again, our bench was very short-staffed. A lot of players didn't play today. Larry Markin didn't play today. Uh, Sato obviously has the virus. Very unfortunate for him. Hopefully, he gets better soon. Staff members also have it. Uh, Chandler Hutchinson, I think I mentioned him already. Uh, Devin Dotson was on, it was was available, didn't play. Makoka didn't play. Again, a lot of our bench players weren't really playing today. Um, and yeah, but of course, what means the most is the Zach Levine performance today. Zach Levine single-handedly got us that victory, in my opinion. Scored so many points, 39 points, 5 assists, and 6 rebounds. Zach Levine was immense to this game today, and I don't think we would have got anywhere near that victory without him. Take away those 39 points, where are the other points going to come from? I think Zach Levine was immense. In the first half, Zach Levine was went off. I believe he had... Um, the most points and a half until Stephen Curry just decided, yeah, I'm going to break that within 13 minutes. So, yeah, fair play to Stephen Curry, but Zach Levine also gets a lot of credit for his performance tonight. Moving into the player that must improve. It's very difficult, but I do have to say it's probably going to be... It's going to have to be Wendell Carter. And look, I'm a big fan of Wendell Carter, and I know people are not a fan favorite of Wendell Carter right now. People want him to get traded whatsoever, whatever. But with Wendell Carter... He needs a he needs he needs some motivation. He needs a reason to play better. Right now, it's it's almost like he's stagnating. Again, he only played 23 minutes tonight. Um, Daniel Gafford is taking minutes off of Wendell Carter right now. Wendell Carter wasn't in foul trouble. Why is why is he only playing 23 minutes and Daniel Gafford's playing 19? The fact of the matter is, Wendell Carter's playing low minutes because he's not performing to those standards. Seven rebounds is a good stat line for for Wendell Carter in terms of. Um, 23 minutes. It's not bad at all. Seven points. He needs to do better. That front court, he's getting a lot of shots. He's That front court goes to him. Patrick Williams is not a person that's going to take a lot of shots in the front court. He's the starting power forward right now. So where's the other? Where's the scoring going to come from in the back court? It has to be Wendell Carter. He needs to play better in those areas. Again, it's nitpicking because we got the win. And I, I, I don't care to bash players when we win the game. But that is something that I do think that Wendell Carter needs to do a lot better in. He's had one good game in terms of the attacking side, having, having 20 plus points. I want to see him reach double figures. I think that is the that is the goal for Wendell Carter. In every single game, reach double figures in scoring and you'll have a good game. 
I think that is what Wendell Carter needs to do. Player of the game, I don't even need to say it. It's Zach Levine. Um, what do I have to say? I mean, he's our best player by far. It's not even a competition right now. Zach Levine has been immense towards this season. And this is the best Zach Levine performance we've seen all season. Um, again, he was hot today. So some of the shot selection I didn't like from Zach Levine still. And I think I, I'm going to get that with Zach Levine every single game. So I'm going to have to accept it. Because when he's hot like that, I think if you take any shot, it's it, it, there's a chance that it goes in. So Zach Levine was immense towards tonight's performance. And... It's, it, was, it was good to see Zach Levine have that type of performance because he's been very stagnant over recently. I know he's even when he's stagnant, he's dropping 17, 16, 22 points um, in, set, in individual games. But this was by far the best Zach Levine performance I've ever seen. It did come at expense for some of our other players, to be fair. In that first quarter, Zach Levine scored every point and I think only Kobe White, maybe Thaddeus Young, a little bit of Wendell Carter, like two points separated. And Zach Levine had like 21. So... That's that's an area where we need to improve on. We need to improve on other players getting involved. When Zach Levine is hot and he's and he's fiery, and the Mavericks are double teaming, who's the next man up? And we saw some good performances from Otto and and Kobe White in those areas. But if we did that in the first half, if if those performances came within the first half, and Kobe White was was scoring lights out. And Otto Porter was getting more shots and not taking some bad shots. Otto Porter also took some bad shots today. If we were doing that in the first half, we would have blown the Mavericks away. But whatever, we won the game. The Bulls record is three and four. We are staying close to 500. And look, if we're a team that's trying to fight for that eighth seed in the playoffs, especially in the East, being around 500 is where we need to be. Right now, three and four is a perfect record for us at the moment. Of course, we want to be above 500. We want to be a team that wins more games than we lose. But right now, that's not where the Bulls level is at. We're not a team that's going to get more wins than we get more losses. Most likely, we're going to have more losses than wins. But we need to stay around 500 because the eight seeds, most of the time, has a negative record in the East. It is what it is. That's how it is. And the Bulls right now are in a good position. We need to keep it going. We sit 10th, I believe, in the standings in the East, which will put us in a playoffs um, fight. Uh, it, it is what it is. If we get in that 10th seed, we could be in that situation where we ha in the playoff bracket where we need to fight for that 8th seed. We're in that position right now, and we need to keep it there. There are teams that have been performing very, very poorly that you expect to do better. So the Bulls need to keep up this level and play and win games. Our next game is against the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers right now are currently losing to the Warriors, according to my knowledge. Um, and they're going to come out firing. Again, they have Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. They're going to have a great... Um, they're going to have a great backcourt, and the Bulls' backcourt needs to match them because I think everywhere else... We, we're gonna have to. We're gonna struggle. We are gonna struggle in that game. But if the Bulls backcourt can match Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum's contribution, we have a very good chance to win that game. Very unlikely. Portland are a terrific team, but it is one of those games where we have to wait and see what will happen. That is going to be the end of this video from me today. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Huge victory today. We did what we were supposed to do. We did our job. I wouldn't go overboard on this victory, but it's definitely a victory that feels good knowing that when we do something that's required of us, we got the job done. We were required to beat the Mavericks today. The Mavericks were not the team that they were with Luca and Paul Zingas, and we, got, we did our job. And that is exactly what you need in this season. You can't be losing to cheap games or, or getting games buzzer beaters like the Warriors won. You need to go out there and do the job that's required of you. And that's what we did today. So I'm very, very happy in that retrospect. And we'll see what we could do against the Portland Trailblazers out in the West. We've got a very tough Western Conference few games to play. Let's see if we could get the job done out in the West. Take care and peace.